again, they appear. It's like a wave appears and the wave goes back into the source. Your friend comes and they go. Your family members, they, they show up and then they disappear. They go their own ways. And you can see it with where you live, with the buildings. Um, there's been some buildings that you remember, they've been there from childhood, but then some, eventually they get old or a corporation company comes and buys that building and they demolish that building and they build something new. So you have this really old, beautiful structure and they come and take it and demolish it and they build a high rise and it's gone. So it appeared and it disappeared. And then you can see that with the governments. Different prime ministers, they show up, they have their time and then they have to leave office and another prime minister or another president or another king or queen or princess is going to come. They have their time and then the time is finished. They appear and then they disappear. They go. These are movements taking place on consciousness. Things appear and disappear. That's the Leela of life. That's the play of life. And then events. You hear about events. Things happen. Some are scary, some are frightening. Some are world wars, like second world war. Some are like diseases that they appear and disappear plagues, a plague comes and it wipes off an entire race or it kills thousands of people, cleans out, destroys, or some kind of tsunami or some kind of earth changes happen and there's this beautiful beach that you really love and you remember it from childhood you used to go and play there and it's very pristine and amazing beach but then some kind of tsunami or some earth changes come and it destroys the entire beach or the water goes up and it's taken over the beach and that beach no longer is there so it disappears. Things appear, things disappear. But all of this time, the I am, the observer, remains the same. So, what do we do in face of all these world events, things happening, and some of them, they affect us and they frighten us because they're very close to home and they scare us. So how do we deal with that? Because yes, what we're talking about sounds really good. And for some of us, it's understandable as long as things don't hit home, as long as this is happening in another continent, it's happening for somebody else, it's happening in another country. But then when it's happening in your own neighborhood, how do I maintain my state of higher self? How do I maintain being a Buddha, how do I stay in this place? Completely connected to the source and not allow myself to buy into this ups and downs because I can see all of a sudden things happening 
in my neighborhood and my friends are losing their lives or they're dying or all kinds of things happens. So what are you talking about Zarathustra? How do I deal with that? Because everything you're saying sounds really good as long as it's not happening to me. As long as it's not happening in my town, in my neighborhood, in my country, in my family. But then when it's happening in your hood and it's very close to home, then a lot of people freak out. And all of this spiritual training and teaching becomes nonsense for them. They can't maintain their position. And that's what my intention is, to work with you and to make sure you realize this, to recognize this. Because this teaching and this work is not a kind of training that Oh, it's great. I love it. I sit with Zarathustra. I feel really calm and quiet as long as everything goes my way. We need to demonstrate this teaching and this training when things don't go our way, when shed, shed hits the fan, when a real major life storm is happening in our lives. That is the time to demonstrate this teaching. That's the preparation. So when it's really close to home, we can still stay into our center and maintain our status of I am. And in the face of all these things appearing and disappearing, even though it's a very close to home, everything is appearing and disappearing and it looks very scary. But you are in this place, you're the Buddha, you're, you're in this position. You're in this place that you are not reacting into the rise of the ocean, the waves rising and falling, you are remain centered because you are seeing through it, because you're looking at it as if it's, you're looking at it as an image. You, you are, know the truth that what's rising and what's falling is not real. What's changing, the ups and downs, is not real. That's my very goal, to transmit that to you, my brothers and sisters, the truth. So you don't fall asleep and fall into the trap that millions of millions of people have fallen into by identifying with the world, by identifying with your even thoughts, emotions, and your own body, identifying to them as if it's real. as if it's the truth. And then you become a victim of the Maya. And you have to repeat the whole thing once again. By bringing our attention to the source of ourselves. That, pay attention to this one, be alert about what I'm about to tell you. Identifying with that which doesn't change. 